Salt. Water. Darkness. Soundproofing. Heart. Go Float Tank. By your powers combined, I am Captain Float Tank. Captain Float Tank, he's a hero. Gonna take your senses down to zero. He's a stimulant, nullified, and he's fighting on the Float Tank side. Captain Float Tank, he's a hero. Gonna take your senses down to zero. Gonna help him answer questions through our podcast. Keep some floating lessons. You'll pay for this, Captain Float Tank. <laughs> All right. Hey there. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, I'm Graham. I'm Ashcon. Happy, and... happy Flag Day out there. <laughs> <laughs> not actually flag day. Yeah, but see, day it is some today. people like because you thought it was. Everyone out there probably was like, "Oh, I guess today's flag day." See, nobody knows when it is. That's the point I'm trying to make here. It's really been the point of this entire podcast. So for some people, flag day is the most important day of the year, <laughs> ooh, ooh. and they're not going well. For not our subscribers anymore. I'll tell you that because <laughs> they tuned out the second you got it wrong. They got really upset. And they're like, "Screw this!" All right, we're probably going to see a flood of, of one-star reviews. They don't even know when flag day is. How are they going to answer my float tank questions? <laughs> it could be today. Do you know for a fact that it's not yes, today? Sir. Yes. Because <laughs> last time you joked about this, it was flag day. <laughs> By accident. <laughs> <laughs> I messed everything up. <laughs> All right. So today's question, <laughs> not not Flag Day's question, is, uh, so, so yes, <clears throat> I, I have a question. Hmm. How do I say, I suspect a floater is wanking in our tanks? How would you handle such a tricky situation? Hmm. Signed, Cork, Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was supposed to be like corked in Ireland or it's just actually the entire city is sort of writing this one in. <laughs> Got together, spoke to the mayor. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, the old winking it. Old wanking in the float tanks. I feel <laughs> like this is in a, the tank. <laughs> wanking in the tanking. Wank. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like this is one of those uncomfortable conversations I always have to have with employees, or I guess now our manager has with employees when they're first <laughs> coming on board, you know, which is most of the people coming into our business are very respectful and awesome human beings and some very small percentage of them will be disrespectful and just being alone with themselves will inadvertently or inadvertently end up wanking in the float tank. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's not like every day this is a situation we're dealing with, but it is, it is something that like I think if you're open for business long enough will probably happen to you at least once. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and there's so, kind of two sides to it. Yeah, there's the sanitation side and, like, the social talking yeah. about it side. Yeah, so which one do you want to talk about first? Let's Well, let's talk about the, the easier one first, which is, the I think, the, the sanitation, sanitation side. side. So, yeah. like, just get, let's just get down, let's get, let's get chemical let's here get, for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's get down to chemistry. Yeah, yeah, so ignoring all the, the fact that, like, the idea of someone winking in your float tanks is gross and off-putting <laughs> and you don't want it to happen the good news is the actual danger is almost none from a sanitary perspective yeah it's like it's not really on the list of things that is going to get like one person sick from somebody else yeah you know when you look at the sanitation stuff out there for almost everything pools and, and restaurants and things like that you know a lot of this is about poop like that's yeah, and like vomit. honestly and vomit and especially diarrhea and vomit because those are both, you know, easy to spread around and, and, uh, are the result of being sick in the first place. Meaning you have something in your body that is, is communicable. And the, the things that can survive like in your gut, you know, gut bacteria are also the kinds of bacteria that can survive in water. And that's not true of things that survive in your blood or in this case, like in your uh, ejaculate or something. So yeah, it's not like it's just not a thing you see. Like there's no protocol for dealing with with ejaculate in a pool and stuff like that. And it's just because it's it's not actually a way they found that people get each other sick. It's not it's not one of those things. So that's the nice part. Like yep, so. it's I I wouldn't drain a float tank were this to happen in in a float tank. No, and the actual again like the amount you even have to be concerned about anything that could live <laughs> in yeah. someone else's ejaculate that will get someone else sick at, like as a result after it's exposed to air and especially any kind of water, not even salt water, not even treated salt water, just regular water is still 
like nothing. <laughs> so so really, what's going to happen is you know your filter in the filtration system on your float tank is is most likely just going to handle it, or you can grab a skimmer if if uh, if it's not, or if, you know sometimes like what I'm I guess what I'm saying is you may not even know like it's just kind of you're going to turn your filtration system on. Right, if you don't get to on. do a visual check, like someone wanked in there, and then the filter kicks on and catches it, and it might just be handled and. Yeah, you ne- you never knew. Yeah, or you get a skimmer out, and that's and that's not fun, but you know it's not the worst thing in the world to to have to deal with. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, like your your normal, the normal beefiness of your filtration system, if you have an appropriately made filtration system for a commercial float facility, like that's like what normal things between each person is going to be able to handle that. There's there's not really anything extra. Like I wouldn't go like dousing extra stuff or. Yeah, you don't need to like block off the tank and shock supply. it to twenty parts per million chlorine yeah. or or anything like that. So that's the that's the kind of sanitation side. So good news. Good news. Gr- there. Gross, but good news. Gross, but good. Yeah, gross, <laughs> but sanitary. GBG. <laughs> so then there's the well, yeah. So then there's the I guess there's the customer relationship side, and then there's the staff training side, uh-huh. <laughs> which almost is a, a different thing. And you're not <laughs> the only one dealing with this sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about customers. And how we would address this with a customer. I, I don't even know if we've had the full conversation between the two of us about how we'd address <laughs> I this. I have been meaning so. to talk to you about this. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really starting to become a problem. I know. And I, yeah, I was thinking you should get treatment for it since <laughs> it's been happening every time you hop um, in the tank. So, for, I mean, most systems out there, you can put notes on people's accounts. Or in some systems, like our Helm system, like you can watch customers and get a message if, like the next time they book. So... I mean, that's usually, I guess that would be my first step is like before even having a conversation with them, see if they ever book an appointment again. <laughs> like they may just be so embarrassed or something that they never come back. Yeah. And at that point, it's, I'm not sure how worth it it is to like call them up and have to talk. Like I would, I would wait until the point where this person's coming back into float again that I would consider like having to really deal with this in any way with them. And I guess some people to try to deal with it before it ever happens, right? Like this is, you'll see things on waivers where it's like, hey, if there's any kind of contaminant right. <laughs> or like deposit that you yeah. left behind in the float tank, we're going to charge you this draining fee uh, or a certain amount of money charged as a result, which uh, like, you know, putting in some kind of dissuading language out there that is subtle enough that they're not thinking about someone else just wanking in the float tank right before them or something I think <laughs> is not is not a bad idea. Um, I mean, to me, if you just have something like on your on your waiver that says like <laughs> I, I promise not to ejaculate in the float yeah. tank, it's just a little extreme, you know. Like I kind of don't want people's brains tank. going there as yeah. much. It's 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 always it's never been something I've wanted to have each one of our customers have to <laughs> have a like vivid mental picture of yeah <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, some kind of some kind of dissuasion or letting them know like hey like we <laughs> we pay attention and do a visual check. Don't leave us anything that shouldn't be in the tank is not a bad way to. Yeah, some people, people do it. We, that's, we don't. that's not our style. Yeah, it's that's something you see in, in people's waivers, and and you don't in other people's waivers. So that's one way that people go about even just trying to prevent it. But regardless of that, then there's the fact that it can happen, and I'm pretty convinced that you can even just have wet floats, like you'd have a wet dream, uh-huh. you know, and and get the same result, but without actually actively doing anything. And I guess that. Like even that to me is a reason enough not to confront someone necessarily immediately afterwards. If it's never going to be a repeat problem, they're never going to come back into your business again. You know. Yeah. Um, but I also understand the flip side. Like I could totally see just wanting to send out a template email or something to every single person who who did something in the tank. I don't know because it's such a sensitive topic. I guess this one really is just so particular to how each individual float center would want to actually operate and, and like what your values are almost yeah. like in the world. How you know? comfortable you feel having these conversations with, with customers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so the nice thing is let's just talk about when you do have to have a customer yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Oftentimes it goes easier than you think. Like you kind of like, you can kind of just lightly bring it up or lightly allude to it and they'll be like, yes, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Like it, you know, it ends up being uh, a kind of, faster and easier conversation than I think usually people uh, think it's going to be in their head. Yeah, definitely. And it's, I mean, it's usually just like, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you're in a public place of business. Don't do that. Uh, yeah. I mean, newspaper, hit them on the nose. <laughs> 
Um, I mean, yeah, when I've had to do it, I guess it usually has been by email, not like by phone call or something like that that I've actually written to someone. Uh-huh. We've, we've had a couple employees call before. Uh-huh. Or one, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and at least it's never gone, it's never gone terribly. You no. know, I, I try not to just be too rude about it, but at the same time to make sure they understand <laughs> where I'm coming from and what's going on. Yeah. Uh, and it's a little bit of a fine line to walk, especially if you feel very like, I mean, when that happens, you kind of feel naturally disrespected or, or like someone's taken advantage of your business to do something it wasn't intended for, like a little dirty or something to me, you know? So like, I I see this instinct to almost berate people for it. And I guess at least in float on style, it's not the direction we go as much. It's more like a preventative thing for a future rather than trying to just make someone feel horribly guilty for what just happened or, or something like that, you know? And I don't think we've ever had a conversation with someone had that not resolve the issue. We've never had a repetitive problem, like someone who just keeps coming in and yeah. we've had to like ban from the center because of persistent winking or something <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah. So that's, I mean, uh, and I'm sure that other centers have had at least one customer like that. You know, it's hard to imagine that there hasn't been some Maybe. kind of pervert out there who... It's using float centers for their uh, their dark deeds, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, fortunately that doesn't it doesn't seem. I mean, first of all, this isn't a really regular occurrence. I know right? it's kind of sounding <clears throat> just because we're having so much conversation about it. Like every few days, this is something that comes yeah. up. Yeah, and us. we've been op- keep in mind we've been open for eight years. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is not super regular, but it is something that will come up more than once over the course of eight years. Yeah, you know, certainly. And also sometimes like shampoo and stuff like that can coagulate in a float tank to look like semen in a way that can be deceptive like that just just to throw that out there too like don't always jump to conclusions there we've definitely had like we used to buy a certain type of soap that as soon as it hit the salt water like just kind of formed this white filmy coagulating sort of sort of uh texture to it yeah and we have a whole a whole episode too where we talk all about that and choosing the right soaps and kind of what can cause that so uh, definitely look in the show notes too, and you yeah. can you can go listen to like the soap side. <laughs> side You're like of this is happening to me all the time. Like it might be it might be something else. Something Weirdly, else might yeah, be going might on. Yeah, might actually be your soap. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's how we. And it's it's interesting that I guess going back to the question, they said like they suspect a floater is winking in their tanks. It makes it uh-huh. sound like this is a recurring yeah. type issue. So I mean, certainly if you person. haven't had just a straightforward conversation and and. You know, confrontation might be too strong a word, but yeah. like, you know, like actually just confronting them about it is totally the next step. You know, like have have a conversation. It doesn't have to be weird and accusatory. I mean, it might be a little weird because it's a weird <laughs> topic to bring up, but you can make it as as uh, what, what's like not uncomfortable for them yeah. as possible, but it needs to be broached, you know. And that's either going to stop it or that person's never going to come back again. <laughs> yeah. Or if it doesn't, I mean, then you can just ask them, sorry, like you can't float here anymore. Yeah, that's uh, that's and that'll be like the end of it. So thanks for the uncomfortable question. I like it. <laughs> I like answering these ones. Um, if you found this through a Google search, <laughs> uh, again, know that this doesn't happen a ton, and <laughs> we're totally safe floating in float tanks. And uh, if you found this just for searching on weird places to ejaculate, then go look <laughs> for the next one. You know. Okay. And. <laughs> and- if you found this because you listen to our podcast every day, then you should consider sending a question of your own in. <laughs> See the transition? That's nice, huh? That's really good. I was just going to keep going down that weird path, too. I saw it. It, was yeah, getting, yeah. it was getting strange. I was only digging deeper. So if you want to if you want to send a question into us, go to floatanksolutions.com slash podcast and slash winking. We will, we will talk to you soon. It's gonna be, tomorrow's going to be a whole different episode, so... <laughs> Tune in then. Bye.